In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages Excel 58 and 59, in which we're going to adjust the column width. And as you format a worksheet, you may need to adjust the width of one or more columns to accommodate changes in the amount of text, the font size, or the font style. Now, of course, the default column width is 8.43 characters, which is a little bit less than one inch. With Excel, you can adjust the width of one or more columns by using the mouse, uh, the format button in the cells group on the home tab, or the shortcut menu. Now using the mouse, you can drag or double click the right edge of a column heading. Now the format button and the shortcut menu include commands for making more precise adjustments. Uh, that's on there. Uh, so let's take a look at step one to begin with. And step one tells us that we're going to position our mouse pointer on the line between the columns A and column B headings until it changes to a double headed arrow with a line in between it. And of course you notice that right when you put it on the line, that's where we see that uh, change right there. And of course this is the column heading, and of course that is the box at the top of each column which contains the identifying letter for it. Now before you can adjust the column width using your mouse, you need to position the pointer on the right edge of the column heading for the column you want to adjust. Now in this case, the cell entry TV commercials, which we can't see it fully on here, is the widest column. So on step two, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this uh, area here and we're going to drag this to the right until um, the column is going to display TV commercials on there and it fully displays that. And of course this is going to be approximately 15.29 characters or approximately 1.23 inches or 112 pixels uh, on there. So of course when you click on this you'll notice that the width and the number of pixels is up there at the top and when you drag this to the right it's uh, changing on there. So you can make your adjustment that's on there and of course it tells us that it's roughly about 112 pixels so we can keep going till we get to about 112 uh, on there so there's 112 which we see the width is 15.29 and if we release our mouse button we of course now notice that as you change the column of course we've seen the screen tip of the up at the top uh, that displays the column width now, of course, in normal view, the screen tip lists the width in characters and in pixels. If we were in the page layout view, the screen tip will actually display the width in inches and in pixels. Now, of course, a quick tip. If you're working with numbers, and if you see a whole bunch of number signs appear in your column after you make an adjustment in a column of uh, values, that ultimately is telling you that the column is too narrow to display the values completely. And it means that you really need to increase the column width until the values appear. Step three on there tells us that what we need to do is, is that we need to position our mouse pointer on the line between columns B and C. And that's until it changes into the double headed arrow. And then next, what we want to do is we want to double click this right here and of course when we double click this or when you double click a right edge of a column heading it activates what we call the auto fit feature and which this is going to automatically resize the column to accommodate the widest entry in the column now in column B when we do this it's going to automatically widen to fit the widest entry uh, which is going to be the label which is going to say uh, INV dot date uh, on there so when we double click this, you now notice that it has increased up and we can see that that information uh, is now completely visible to us and that uh, all it just makes it so that we can see all of the data that's within uh, that column. Now step four tells us that we want to use this auto fit feature and we want to resize the columns C, D, and also columns J. Uh, so we'll do this uh, one at a time on here. So first of all, we'll start off with column C. So there's column C. We double click in there. Notice it makes it wider. And of course, the INV do is on there, and that's our widest entry. Then we go to column D. And of course, we resize it. And of course, uh, 
one of our numbers is a little bit larger and of course our cost each is on there that uh, kind of makes it wide so we can see all the data there uh, and then of course it wants us to go over here to column J and of course our label is going to be the widest point on column J and of course you see there we go we double click that and of course the column J percent of the total is now the widest area and we can see all the information there once we have that, now what we're going to do is we're going to select the range E5. So we're going to go here to E5. And we're going to go down to H5. So we're going to select E5 to H5. So we're going to select these four uh, cells right here. Now it tells us that you can change um, the width of multiple columns at once. Of course, first of all, you need to select either the column headings or at least one cell in each column. So we're going to change all of these at the same time period because you can see that double clicking each of these can take some time, especially if this is, was a rather large uh, spreadsheet. But what we're going to do is, is that we're going to go to step six and it tells us that we would need to click the format button in the cells group uh, on there. So here we have the cells group and that's on the home tab and here's our format button. When we click on that, we need to go down to column width. And we're going to click on column width. And of course, this is where the column width dialog box opens up. And the column width measurement is based on the number of characters that will fit in the column width when formatted uh, in the normal font and font size, which in this case is 11 point calibre. So, what we're going to do is it tells us that um, we're going to drag the dialog box by its title bar if its placement obscures our view of the worksheet which we're okay right now and it tells us that we want to type in 11 in the column width text box and we're going to click on OK and of course now you'll notice that the column width has changed uh, for columns E, F, G, and H uh, on there so now we can see all the information. Now of course a quick tip for you on there if an entire column rather than a column um, cell is selected, you can change the width of the column by right-clicking the column heading and then clicking the column width on the shortcut menu. Now check your um, spreadsheet to make sure it looks like this right now and go ahead and save your, doc, uh, save your spreadsheet. And of course uh, if you take a look on page Excel 59, it talks a little bit about changing row height. And pretty much you change the row height very similar as you change the columns um, on there. The row height is calculated in points just as it is the columns. And it's the same units of measured used for fonts. And of course the row height must exceed the size of the font you're currently using. Now normally you don't need to adjust row heights manually because the row heights adjust automatically to accommodate font size changes. But if you format something that in a row to be a larger font, uh, point size, Excel adjusts the row to fit the largest point size uh, in the row. However, if you have just as many options for changing row height as you do the column width. Of course, you can use the mouse and you can place the, your mouse pointer in between the column. And your mouse pointer looks like that where it's in between the one and the two. And of course you can click and drag. Uh, of course you can also double click to make it auto fit. Uh, or you can also use the format and you can click on that as well. Uh, and then of course you can use the row height, uh, height command on the shortcut menu if you right click on it. Or you can click on the format button which we just used a second ago on the home tab and you can change that as well. Uh, so go ahead and make sure that you do save your document, and uh, that concludes the information on pages Excel 58 and 59. Uh, on the next video, we're going to be talking about inserting and deleting rows and columns. So you're ready to move on to the next video.